Yet what is a fifth generation fighter jet? So it has better avionics, it has better electronics, it has better missile systems, it has better maneuverability. And I would request all social media influencers and YouTubers whom the Maldives tourism department is trying to target by giving money, giving cash, exotic resorts. Don't do it. You know, this shows the rising dominance of India, even in airport. India is doing make in India. Jain friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Friends, before I start the video, I uh, just wanted to tell you that tomorrow, Saturday, 6 o'clock, on the Chanakya Dialogues English and the Chanakya Dialogues Hindi, you can watch me live, your questions, my answers. Let's talk tomorrow, 6 o'clock, mark it on your calendars. FGCA, fifth generation fighter aircraft. This is something that India has been chasing for a very long time. And now, thankfully, 15,000 crore rupees have been sanctioned by the Cabinet Committee on Security, which is the highest decision making body in these cases. In India, they have sanctioned 15,000 crore rupees and said, go for it. Uh, this entire developmental process of this fifth generation fighter aircraft uh, will take 10 years, and then you can start uh, this entire uh, bulk manufacturing and then you know, getting them inside the Indian Air Force, etc. Indian Navy also, but uh, here's the catch. In the next four years, they should have a prototype ready. A basic prototype ready in the next four years or so. So that prototype, you know, that prototype will fly, it will do maneuvers and it will give an idea to the manufacturers in India as to what exactly is wrong and what they can do better. It's, it's a long process which has been pending. You know, there was this partnership with Russia for a fifth generation fighter jet, which fell through because of transfer of technology and other disagreements because Russia, in spite of being a very close friend of India, has always, you know, in terms of technology transfer, uh, Russia is extremely, extremely finicky. It does not matter if India is a close friend or not. Russia will oppose technology transfer, even in the case of Brahmos. This part is true, for even for the Brahmos missile, because it is a joint venture between between India and and. Uh, Russia. Now, coming back to this fifth generation fighter jet, what is a fifth generation fighter jet? So it has better avionics, it has better electronics, it has better missile systems, it has better maneuverability, it has better everything, but above all, it has stealth. The whole idea of a fifth generation fighter jet is that it will be almost impossible to catch it. For example, a fifth generation fighter jet like the F-35 or the series F-35 series. Lockheed Martin F-35, very famous. You can see a photograph here, you know, on your screens. Now this F-35, it's a pretty big plane. It's a single engine plane, fast, excellent, and one of the finest fifth generation fighter jets available in the world. I would say the finest, I would say the finest. And yet it has the radar signature of a golf ball or a very small bird. So you, you don't know what is in the air. You don't know what is in the air. The cross section, the radar cross section is so small, so small that you can't make out it's an aircraft. It's almost invisible. I'm not going to use the word invisible here that it is invisible because it's not, but it's almost invisible and that is the capability India seeks to achieve. Now I, I have, you know, uh, there, are, there are things here which I would like to share with you. After that, I'll give you my brief analysis. So, uh, the AMCA, right, Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft, AMCA. So, we have been at it since 2009, but uh, it, it did not happen for very many reasons and pe people put it on hold and they said that, you know, very high costs, exceptionally high costs and we don't need it and then the government had to be convinced, but this government was convinced and they said irrespective of the cost, if you have to do it, we have to do it. And people said that, you see, the developmental and research costs are so high for a fifth generation fighter jet that it's not worth it. But then the Air Force went back to the government and said, this new government, when the government came, they said, boss, I mean, if China has it and if China is willing to give it to Pakistan, you can't fight them with a three and a half or a third generation jet. You need a fifth generation jet to counter a fifth generation jet. Pakistan does not have the technology to make a baby's diaper. It can't. But surely they have pilots who can fly that jet if they are given in flyaway conditions, fifth generation jets by China. Now, this, this Chinese aircraft, uh, let, me, let me tell you which are the other fifth generation jets, by the way, this is interesting. US is F-35 Lightning, we've already discussed that, F-35 Lightning and F-22 Raptor. Now, F-22 is 
something that is so secret that the U.S. has not given this technology to anybody in the world. It's only the U.S. that flies F-22. They don't want to give it to anybody. It is that secret. And then you have the F-35, which I already mentioned. China has J-20 Mighty Dragon and the Russians have Su-57 Felon. Recently, Turkey conducted the maiden test flight of his own fifth generation fighter aircraft called Khan, developed by Turkish Aerospace Industries and BAE Systems of the UK. So, Turkey developed it along with the UK. And now, Turkey has a fifth generation fighter jet called Khan. It's It'll take time. It's not like it's ready to uh, be operational right away. It'll take years and years. But yeah, they have something that they can show that this is our product and we are testing it. So that is happening in Turkey. And uh, this AMCA, our AMCA is going to have Mark 1 and Mark 2 versions. And this is why Prime Minister Modi went and one of the reasons why he got the GE engines. But more powerful than the GE engines are going to be India's own indigenous engines, which India will make later. Initially, they will be powered by the GE engines of the United States of America. The AMCA, you see, Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft, AMCA is the, is the name of the project. Uh, top speed of nearly 2,600 kilometers per hour, which is Mark 2.15. A combat range of 1,620 kilometers and be equipped with a 23 mm cannon. Very dangerous. A 23 mm cannon and 14 hard points for weaponry. A hard point is actually a missile. This is just the way the Air Force talks. Hard point. So all these missiles under slung, shoo, that is a hard point. So uh, 23, uh, I don't know if you've seen Zoos. Uh, or Zoo 23. So I'm not saying this is the gun that is being used, but it will give you a fair idea as to uh, what is happening and which caliber of weapon is also going to be used. So Zoo is a very, very, very dangerous weapon, right? And uh, it also has a four barrel variant on tracks called the Shilka, but uh, that is another story for another day. Uh, a 23 mm gun mounted on it, fantastic rate of fire thousands of rounds per minute and also these hard points. These are going to be various missiles. Maybe they'll put a Brahmos. Who knows? Right? And maybe you have a Brahmos which has a range of 900, 1000 kilometers. So your standoff distance, if it becomes 1000 kilometers, then what? You can actually uh, target through an aircraft any point in Pakistan because Pakistan is geographically very narrow. So you can hit any point and your aircraft does not have to cross into Pakistani airspace. You know, you can be flying over Amritsar and take out a building in Lahore or even beyond. It doesn't matter any, any part. And uh, so this is uh, what it is. And 40 AMCA is expected to fly on G engines with more powerful indigenous. So initially 40 will fly and AMC is intended to be less costly than similar aircraft because 70% of its components will be indigenous. And this is what India is saying. So. You know, this shows the rising dominance of India, even in air power. India is doing make in India. It's saying we will manufacture in India. We will manufacture the world's best technology. Here is a bit of unsolicited advice. Maybe it's the way I think and I could be wrong. Yeah. I should not be giving advice like this because I know almost nothing about the Air Force. But I think it is time that India, you know, 10 years, 12 years is a long time. It's a long time. And we need fifth generation fighter jets immediately. And this is a question. I would not say advice because I would not presume to know enough to advise uh, officers of the Indian Air Force or pilots of the Indian Air Force. But uh, let's say we were to have four or five squadrons of F-35s with the Indian Air Force. Let's say five squadrons of F-35s purchased in flyaway condition from the United States of America. Does that make sense? Let me know. I don't have the technological know-how or the professional capability to talk about, you know, the good and bad of a fighter aircraft. But if any of you are there, if any Air Force officer is there, any pilot is there, please write in the comments below and let me know if I'm wrong. I'm always willing to be educated. And the other news that I have for you, ladies and gentlemen, is from good old Maldives. Purana bhai, old brother. Maldives. Now, Maldives is saying that Maldives Association of Travel Agents and Tour Operators, they are called Matato. Just like Potato, they are called Matato. And they are saying that because Indians have boycotted Maldives, 
the economy of Maldives is going down the drain. Till recently, China had been promising them the moon and the earth and the stars and there were an influx, a deluge of Chinese tourists, but that has stopped. They came, one shot, then they went away and they are not coming back again. And these people are really suffering because apparently their president, Mohamed Muizu, can't keep his mouth shut. That is a problem with Mohamed Muizu. He can't keep his mouth shut. He has to keep on saying something or the other because he has received money. So he'll keep on getting small bits of payment from China, $10,000, $20,000, and he'll keep on saying stuff. But the people of Maldives are suffering and they're good friends of India's. They're good friends of ours. And the people of Maldives say that enough is enough. Now this Matato, this Maldives tour operators and travel agents and all that. Now these guys are saying that they want to conduct road shows in India. So what they did was apparently they went to India's high commissioner in the Maldives and told him, sir, bad times here for us. There are no tourists and Indian tourists have almost disappeared. And he's saying India was a top visitor country, has slipped a sixth position in terms of tourist arrivals. And Motato plans to collaborate closely with Indian High Commission, launching road shows and organizing influencer and media familiarization trip to the Maldives. Now, what they're saying is that uh, we'll get social media influencers to come to Maldives. That is what they're saying. So big Indian YouTubers will go to Maldives. I would just request you. I would just request. And this is the reason why I took up this story, because, you know, with the fifth generation fighter aircraft, this story does not match. But I deliberately took it up. And the reason why I took it up is... Uh, you know, now they're going to tell social media influencers, all paid trip, come, you fly first class, you fly business class, we'll put you up in top resorts in the Maldives and this and that. And, you know, YouTubers from India will go like they went to China and started praising China. Their Indian YouTubers will go and they'll start praising Maldives, how the people of Maldives love you. Of course, the people of Maldives love us, we know that. But the fact of the matter is that they've insulted India, they've insulted our Prime Minister. It is my humble appeal to Indian YouTubers, unless... The government of Maldives apologizes to the Indian Prime Minister and apologizes to India. We should not go to Maldives. We should not go to Maldives. Forget about these free business class tickets and five-star hotels and resorts. Yeah. I mean, just forget about it. It doesn't matter. These things have no value. I mean, you can't have ministers and the presidents of, of a country, a president of a country, abusing India, abusing our Prime Minister, and we'll say, hey, I'm getting a free trip to Maldives, let's go. I, I would request all of you. I would request everybody, all influencers at least, don't go. This ban on Maldives, remember, it is not a government of India mandated ban. The government of India has never passed a statement saying, don't go to Maldives. This is public power. I would request all YouTubers and social media influencers. I don't have so many followers. You guys have, I don't know, tens of millions of followers. Please, because of money, because of a free fully paid trip, please do not compromise on your ethics. Don't do it. Go to Maldives. I will also go to Maldives once the government has apologized to the Prime Minister of India and once they've apologized to the government of India. Once they have done it, I'll be happy to go to the Maldives. I have no problem with traveling. I can go to the Maldives, but till then, I'm sorry, it's a no-show. And I would request all social media influencers and YouTubers whom the Maldives Tourism Department is trying to target by giving money, giving cash, giving free tickets, free stays in these exotic resorts. Don't do it. Your honor is worth a million times more than that. And now friends, we have Mossam Jain who says that, Hello sir, Jai Janindra. Jai Janindra Mossam Ji. Don't you think US is putting sanctions purposely to Venezuela and other countries to have a backup plan when all the oil in the world is going to finish? Then US will take from Venezuela. It's not just about US and Venezuela. See, the oil politics, no? Oil politics. That is why all these Middle East has seen unrest and most of this unrest in the Middle East is something that America loves to do. America does not take out its own oil. Its own oil exploration is very, very limited. It is not that America will buy oil from Venezuela. America wants to direct from where the world will buy oil. There will be a time when it suits America, when America will say, okay, the sanctions on Venezuela are lifted, please buy from Venezuela. America will do that. Currently, it's not doing it. And the second question is from Parth Popat. Namaste, Gaurav Namaste, Parth Ji. My question is with Russia attaching land of West back companies like Agroterra, Danone, Carlsberg, etc. and simultaneously peaking attacks on Ukrainian energy. Do you see this conflict ending soon? In which geography can there be a conflict next? ASEAN versus China or China-Taiwan? Uh, very difficult to predict, actually. The honest answer is, I don't see this, this, this 
conflict will end if Trump comes to power and Prime Minister Modi and President Trump together can make the Ukraine-Russia war end. That's number one. The next conflict zone, I should not be the person to predict because this time in this instance, my, my, you know, my uh, prediction went wrong here. On live television, I said that Russia will not attack and Russia attacked. And I said, Russia has attacked, but Russia will not enter Ukraine. And Russia entered Ukraine. And then I said, this war will be over in one week. And it's been more than two years. So I've been proved wrong. I will not try and comment on, you know, which war will happen next. But I again want to reiterate, for everybody's benefit, there will be a conflict between India and China. The conflict between India and China is coming. Tomorrow, day after, five years later, it will happen. Watch my words, mark my words. Thank you very much for watching this video, ladies and gentlemen. And if you like this video, press the like button, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to press the bell icon. Jai Hind, Vande Mataram, Bharat Mata Ki Jai.